there are many different types of commercially manufactured security driver pins. Each one of these pins has their own characteristic feedback and must be manipulated in a specific fashion in order to be successfully picked. In this video, we will be covering tapered security drivers. If we examine the tapered driver, its central section, shown in yellow, is cylindrical and has a fixed diameter. The area in blue is tapered and therefore has a gradually reduced diameter as you approach the edge of the pin. This geometry is responsible for its characteristic behavior. In this two pin example, let's assume that pin one binds first. It is lifted to shear, but it will not stay there. This is because as it's elevated towards the shear line, it will pass its tapered section and will no longer be the pin with the largest diameter at the shear line. At this point, driver 2 has a larger diameter at the shear line. This will cause driver 1 to partially fall back down below the shear line. Now, pin 2 is binding and is lifted up to the shear line, but it too will fall back down. This is because it now will no longer have the largest diameter at the shear line. This process will be repeated as the pins alternately bind until all the pins eventually get nudged up to the shear line and the lock opens. There are three important tips that I would like to review that will maximize your success with a tapered driver. Number one, use heavy tension. Two, keep gently nudging each key pin up in small increments. The feedback for a binding pin is often very subtle and sometimes seemingly non-existent. And finally, three, watch out for oversetting pins. Let's take a look at these concepts in more detail. The model I will be using today is a lateral cutaway of the ASA 500, which was beautifully constructed by Diggs. The black line seen here is the shear line. There are five tapered pins installed in this lock with their tapered section highlighted in blue. The key pins are highlighted in green. I'm going to be using heavy counterclockwise tension. Pin one is now binding and is partially set in the tapered section of the driver. Two is loose. 3 is binding and once again partially set in the tapered section. 4 is loose, but as it's tested, pin 2 is seen being partially set into its tapered section. 5 is loose, 4 is loose, 3 is loose, 2 is loose, 1 is loose, 2, 3, 4, 5 is loose, 4, 3, 2, one, they're all loose. Two. Now three is fully set. Four now is fully set. We are now going to see a micro nudge in driver two, which is barely perceptible. Let's compare a still shot of driver two before and after it is nudged you can see that it has slightly moved up in the pin chamber. It is these small movements which slowly move the driver to shear as the pin stacks are alternately tapped. Three is loose, two is loose, one is loose, two, three, four, now five is binding, and it's partially set in its tapered section. One, two is fully set, three, four, five. Now one is fully set, two, three, four, five is binding, and we're open. Let's take a look now at another important concept of the tapered driver, which is the overset. It is easy to overset tapered drivers and sometimes difficult to identify them. Pin 1 is binding and is partially set. Now, pin 2 is intentionally overset. Pin 3 is still able to be partially set. 4 and 5 are loose. When we come back to pin 2, we feel the lack of a key pin, which is our strongest indicator that there is something wrong. The chamber feels empty. We can feel and hear the pins in 3 and 1, but nothing in 2. Oversetting the key pin with tapered drivers is a difficult situation to recover from.
pulsing tension can drop this overset pin, but will often result in dropping multiple pins. The best way to deal with this situation is by avoiding it in the first place. Finally, there is an interesting auditory phenomenon that occurs with the taper drivers of the ASA 500. When a bound taper driver is picked, a thud occurs as the driver transitions from a bound state and lifted into an unbound state. This thud does not indicate that the pin has been set. It simply means that the driver was partially bound. There is also often a distinct lack of auditory feedback when the driver is set to shear. This is in stark contrast to a lock with standard drivers, which snaps when the driver is set to shear. In this next example, I have replaced the tapered drivers with standard ones. Let's listen to those snaps. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you at the next one.